Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Adventure Built. My name is Kelly. I'm Trevor. And today we are doing the hardest way possible, the back way to Crown King. Stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Today we are doing an adventure taking the hardest way possible, the back way to Crown King. Now what I mean by that is there is a main road that goes the back way to Crown King along, uh, what's this road called? For naming sake, there's a bunch of different roads and trails that this actually links up, but we'll call it Crown King Trail because that's, I think the bulk of it is Crown King Trail. So there's a main trail. Well, along that trail, some guys that have Jeeps and larger upscale vehicles that can get over these obstacles have built little bypasses that are much, much harder than what the main trail is. And we have decided in our infinite wisdom to take our moderately built overland vehicles and test our limits on these trails. Yeah, mm, I'd say they're borderline straight up rock crawling. Uh, but like maybe mild rock crawling. This isn't King of Hammers for sure, no, but it's close. But yeah, I feel I felt like there was a crowd section back there on the last one cheering for us because we were nailing it. We were nailing it. it. Woo! Woo! <laughs> so let's show you guys what we have gotten so far, but we're not done yet. So what happened, bro? So, uh, yeah, a little, little slippage. Uh, I don't know if the line I chose had a little of the, uh, that really fine moon dust in it and my tires just weren't catching, but uh, that's what they got lockers for. So, yeah, just turn that on and ride on up, no problem. You mean third try? Uh, second. Third. Oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to go back and review the videotape. <laughs> <laughs> Sucker! Uh, good it. job. <laughs> Let's see if he spins it all. We're at the second obstacle on the way up the back way to Crown King. And I'm gonna dub this one the triplets because it is three side-by-side -side obstacles that all look pretty nasty. Um, there is a, the middle one is ridiculous hard. The left one looks pretty easy. And the right one looks like in the middle of the road between crazy dumb and doable. So I think we're gonna try the right side. Yeah, I think it's the three bears right here. One's too cold, one's too hot, that one's just right. <laughs> we will see. We are now about to conquer the right triplet, or what Trev likes to say, his three little bears, but we're doing the right one, and it is definitely not easy. Hey, be sure to spot me on that big rock at the top so I go right over it and don't high center on it. Ooh. 
Oh, there's some fender. Fender rubbing. Oh, maybe you're not good. Not good. Put your locker on. It's on. Where are you going? And take another run at it. Oh my god. It's just fender, it's okay. <laughs> Until it pops off. Driver. There you go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep, barely made that one. <laughs> uh, lockers are so awesome. Definitely would not have made that with that one. I know it's really hard to see how high and how steep this right triplet is, but it is probably very steep. As you can see, Trev's way down there. I'm at the top, well, almost at the top. And he's probably 30, 40 feet below me um, at an angle. So yeah, it's definitely steep and the run up to it is uh, very, very soft. So there's no momentum really to be had, but you don't want it anyway because this big rock at the top. Let's see how Trev does. Twice? You almost went sideways on that. You guys saw that, right? He almost went sideways on that climb. That was, uh, that got a little sketch for a sec. However, he ran it the first time, didn't have to move back at all to gain any momentum. He wasn't sliding. Um, I'm not quite sure what I was sliding on, but I definitely was sliding. But he made it, so plus one for Trev. May not look steep, but let me just show you how steep it is. I'm gonna walk down it, and it is uh, steep and loose. Don't tell Trevor, but that was actually quite impressive. He came right up that. This stuff I can't describe to you is like loose, mashed up, sandy, gravel. It's just a really nasty composition to try to drive on steep grades on, but uh, someone nailed it. What'd you think of that one? That was cool. That yeah. was, uh, yeah, I thought I was gonna get a lot more spin uh, and everything, cause it's like a moon dust with some rocks in there, but Freaking forerunners, man. They just eat it up. <laughs> Little goats. <laughs> we are tackling the mega steep fourth obstacle. Even just getting it lined up is horrible. Just for the record, I don't like this. Really wasn't too bad it just it's uh super steep very loose i thought that we might start getting some rollback because it was so steep once you start getting that rollback downhill even going trying to go forward you're just not going to recover it and then um hopefully you don't roll it so all's well that ends well so i am not going to say that forerunners are better than tacomas 
I'm just gonna go ahead and let the video say it for me. So I have no idea what we were thinking in trying to do the back way to Crown King the hardest way possible, but uh, this is definitely the hardest way possible. But let me just, uh, let me give you guys a peek as to what uh, Trevor's about to try to do. Yeah, I can't even walk this, so we'll see what happens. Hey, the sides on this are so steep, I can't even film from up top, so I'm gonna have to be in the track. So come up kind of halfway, and then I'm gonna back up, so don't run me over. Please, don't run me over. Am I in your will? Yeah, but you're like fourth in line, so I don't think it's worth it. Definitely not worth it then. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm ready when you are. See how he does. Hey, you're gonna have a big dip on your driver's side. Go slow, otherwise you'll uh, high center. Got it. There you go, you got it, go straight ahead. Two parts. One, very good drive on Trevor's part. Two, good spot on my part, even behind the camera, because that was definitely a team effort. Uh, there was a couple times that he definitely would have either um, had some serious body damage and or possibly rolled because of the angles he was at, but he freaking nailed it. Yeah, no no drags, no, uh, no nothing. It was a good spot, bro. Yeah, that was good. That was a, that was a very confident drive. <laughs> All right, let's Thank see. You. Let's see how I do. Yes. All right, so this is like obstacle four or five. I don't remember now. And we've gone straight to Crazy Town because this thing is insane. Uh, Trev nailed it with the Forerunner, and I'm, I'm probably going to struggle on this one because this one is definitely not made for long wheelbases. Gotta move, it's so loose. Don't drop the camera. Oh boy. I saw you, you almost fell. <laughs> you almost fell going to the top of this. All right, so I know I gotta go slow right here because I saw Trev do it. Let's not break anything today. I am 100% certain I smacked my slider on the driver's side. Thank you, White Knuckle Off-Road, for saving me from having some serious rocker damage right there. That was awesome! Good job, bro. <laughs> that was sweet. So right now we are on the, I don't know, fifth 
ish obstacle and um, yeah fifth or sixth and this one is super super long and steep and loose just like the rest of them except it's way way longer so we'll see how Trev does Hey, your uh, driver's side is right almost up against the rock. You're gonna have to come back a little bit and go passenger. I didn't see it because I was trying to walk backwards. That should be good. Now come passenger. Yeah, you should clear it now. Ah, you threaded that needle, nice. Uh, give me a second to look. Oh, uh, isn't that the one with the boulder? Yeah, this is it. This is the gnarly one that I thought we would never even ever do. So remember back when my wife and I, Tara, we did the back way to Crown King when my truck was completely stock. So once I get the 35s and my lift on, this is happening. This is definitely going to happen. All right, it's a solid maybe. I don't even know. I don't know how people get around that boulder right there. That's impressive. I'd like to see it happen. It's pretty narrow. I looked at this from the top and said, there is absolutely zero chance in the world that I'll ever get up this, but I'm gonna try when I get my 35s. Well, today's the day to try and it's terrible. Uh, so this is basically the third section of this long run out uh, hard way and there's, it splits, the right way looks doable, the left way looks pretty impossible and impassable. So we're gonna go walk in now and see, cause there's a huge bolt at the top that will pretty much stop everything except for a motorcycle. I got it. Yeah? The only thing I'm worried about is sliding into that boulder? <laughs> Not sliding into it, it's just the off camber uh -huh. putting a body panel on it. It's already got paint on it. I don't want to add any to it. Right. Cool. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> so Trev says he's going to go for it. And I wish him all the luck in the world. You can always back down. <laughs> you can always back down this 50 foot section and then take the uh, not so gnarly way. But. Uh, We'll see how he does. Hey, you know what? Hang on, let me get down into this. I really can't see what is uh, happening from up here. So as you can see, there's a high road and a low road. Trev's taking the low road. I'm trying to spot it from up top here pretty much to get better video. Uh, I was taking the lazy way out, but I really can't see what he's doing on the passenger side. So now I have to jump down into this, uh, I don't know, five, six foot trench and not break an ankle and spot him the right way. Ugh. All right, I'm down in the rut and ready. Oh, what happened there? This is the part that Trev's concerned about. He made it halfway up this hard section pretty easily with a little bit of wheel spin. He had to kind of get a second run at it. But this is the part that is pretty 
terrifying. So I'll walk you through it and then he's gonna try it. All right, I'm ready. Yeah, take it wide so you can try to get it as straight on as possible. Yeah, three center. Yeah, come more passenger. Yeah, a little bit more passenger. Yeah, right there. Yeah, we got a foot on my side. Come more my side. Yeah, hard driver, hard driver. Damn. So it got dusty there, but you could see the Trev was starting to slide into that big boulder. So I'm trying to keep him off of it. Let's keep going. Yeah, just come straight to me. Wait, wait, wait. Your tail is slid to that boulder. If you slide any more, you're going to hit it. You're, you're almost past it. Back up and uh, give it some gas. All right, don't back up too far. Keep going, keep going. Yeah, you're good right there. Hey, try to cut driver's side. If you come more past side, you're gonna hit that boulder hard. Right now, Trev is literally stuck between a rock and a hard spot. He can't go back right now because of that boulder. He has slid so far passenger side that he's pretty much impacting it, which we don't want to do and cause a lot of body damage to the forerunner. So right now, option B is to winch out. Uh, we're gonna try to do a rock build up in front of the one obstacle he's having a hard time getting over, but the angle and everything is just not gonna work. So now we're gonna winch out. Um, it is definitely the safer option because he's just not getting anywhere with what he's doing right now. So we're taking option B. Problem here in the desert is one, it's 103 degrees and super hot and humid. And two, these desert trees aren't real huge on supporting the weight of a vehicle. So this is gonna be a super short pull just to kind of get us over this one rock and then he'll get out on his own power. But right now we need to find a big tree or a big rock to anchor on. We are still going to winch Trevor out, however, <laughs> hey, what happened there? There goes the toilet. <laughs> what happened? It's You're, still going. It's still rolling. <laughs> Good thing that's waterproof and dustproof. So obviously it's a steep angle. Trip opened up the tailgate of his forerunner and everything in the back that wasn't strapped down fell out and rolled down the hill. His duffel bag is now 15 feet lower than what it was before. <laughs> I wish I had recorded that. Trev was trying to close his tailgate and everything was falling out again. And he ended up like half in, half out. It was quite the gymnastics movement. But uh, so the option we have gone with now is I have succumbed to the fact that my Tacoma will never make it up what Trev has made up so far. Um, I have more ground clearance right there, but with the length that I have, uh, I won't make it around that boulder without damage. So I am not willing to incur damage to take the mega hard route when I can go damage free and go the still very hard, but not quite as hard route. I'm gonna go around Trev to be his anchor so he can winch off me because there is nothing up there that will support the weight of his vehicle with the angle that it's at right now. Ah, <sighs> desert life.
and the recovery begins. I put my hard shackle uh, into the receiver hitch so Trev's got a good, nice, solid mount to get his winch onto. We're not gonna pull him out. Um, it's just too much weight. It's gonna be a much smoother pull. We don't wanna risk him sliding into that boulder. So he's going to winch off of me and he is right now going to pull all of his gear out so we can get this going because it's hot as Hades right now. All right, get it hooked up, kid. All right, got the new recovery gear. This thing is pretty cool. So let's get her done. Kelly's nice little uh, receiver hitch here has a, um, a hard shackle through it and uh, it's got this little urethane uh, thing to keep it from banging and just protect it. Uh, I don't think it's going to fit through mine so I'm just going to use a soft shackle through that. Um, this is a brand new one uh, I'm trying out. This is Iron Man 4x4 one. This thing is way overkill uh, for my vehicle so it'll have no problem holding on to this thing. I know it's hot. <laughs> it's your fault I got stuck. <laughs> All right. If you had 35s, you wouldn't have. <laughs> Actually, probably a couple more inches of clearance that could have done it. Yeah. So, the other cool thing about this bag, not only does it hold all of my uh, winch recovery gear, it also is the dampener as well. So I don't got to fill up my bag with rocks or dirt or anything else. Just throw, unvelcro it, throw it on there, good to go. Had to be a thorn tree too. Of course it did. Do you know who feels bad for that guy having to crawl in his uh, truck because it's so steep and the cliff sides here? Not this guy. And apparently it's really busy right now too. It didn't seem like the winch was working it, but um, so I tried to give it a little gas to, to you know get up a little higher to see if I can get unstuck, and then just winch winch me closer up. But honestly, just let the winch do its job, and it should get you out every time. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. The more you know. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, a huge shout out to Snatch Clothing for their super innovative recovery gear bag that is also a winch line cover, uh, winch line weight, and that thing is awesome. Super durable, very convenient, easy to use, easy to get everything in and out of. Good job making that. And also a big shout out to Iron Man. Soft shackles were clutch, and your winch once again pulled us out of a sticky situation. It is really hard to show you guys how hard some of these obstacles are. So we're at the next one, and this thing is more of a solid rock feature versus uh, the loose rock and everything that we've been dealing with so far. But this thing is got, it's higher on the left hand side and there's a boulder on the right hand side. This is gonna be challenging and you can't tell how steep this thing is, but it is steep. Uh, this one's gonna be a fun challenge right here. Let's see how we do. Just walking this thing's tough. These boulders have good grip though, so that'll help. The plan is to uh, just go ahead and send that thing. Good plan, uh, Master Tacticianer. Um, passenger side, uh, don't worry too much about the boulders. These are like uh, steep little cliffs on uh, driver. 
Yeah, cool. All right, so another obstacle that looks killer. I think this is number six for the day and they just keep on coming. So this is super steep and rocky and my whole goal here is to kind of stay way wide on the passenger side and then cut back because on the driver's side it's super uh it is super ledgy and steep Lockers on. Got a big roll boulder on the right and not getting up over it. You slipped. You slipped right into it. All right, there you go. You got it. Now turn. Oh. A little bit more. Your front tire is down. Now your back tire is going to drop. Front tire drop. There we go. Tell you with those bigger tires, he's got a lot more room for those tires. The approach angle is a lot better than what I got. Now cut it. There you go. About to run me down! About to run me down! Next time, listen to your spotter on the first time. <laughs> and if you would have tried to pull right, your uh, your wheels would have been all trashed too. Yeah. So, all right. Oh, good lord. The rock's got good traction, except when there's sand on it. Right. That track definitely pushed the limits of what I think the Tacoma is able to do especially without our front locker. Um, I almost slid right into that one rock ledge and then I almost hit the boulder coming around on the second try, swinging out wide, but I was able to get up. Luckily, um, Trev did a great spot and the drive went smooth. Let's see what he can do in the 4Runner. I got close on that. 
That was awesome. Yeah. Do you miss that boulder by this much? This much, like this much. <laughs> hey, squish your head. Hey, squish your head. Uh, yeah, that was close. I was like, oh, there's a little bumper damage. Oh, well. It's plastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moving on. I was just exiting this little technical section here to get back on the main road. And on the exit here, there's a little drop. And I wasn't paying much attention, just kind of thought I'd just go right over it. And uh, apparently, it's a little stupider than what I thought. My rear tire fell into a little hole here, a rock moved and um, my whole frame, I landed on the slider on the driver's side. So now I'm kind of stuck. I'm hoping that I can kind of back out of it, but my front tires, as you can see, are in a rut. My back tires are in a rut and I'm high centered right now. I'm just sitting on the sliders. So white knuckle off-road, you guys are killing it. Save me rockers. Twice in one day, twice in one day you saved me. So it's good that we're both getting some real life experiences of getting stuck. <laughs> So, however, this section that we got stuck at, we do have some locals. They're hanging out in the shade right over there, a bunch of cows. They're moving on over. Yeah, they're telling us to move out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna try to back out. We're, we're both dads. Dad jokes all day. Gonna push that rock in front of it instead of behind it. I'm filming. Yeah, let's give it a go. There you go. There you go. I was sliding on the slider. Imagine that. That's what they're there for. <laughs> All right, you're on it. Yeah, you're over it. Go passenger. Passenger. Yeah. Now cut driver. You got stuck on that? He just learned from my mistakes. That's all that was. This next one is a doozy. On on this obstacle here, the half of it is definitely doable. It's within our scope with uh, our overland rigs. But after that. It's, it's just too much. It's more of a rock crawling, um, maybe even a lifted side by side kind of thing. Um, right now, like this right here is a four foot uh, cliff. I mean, even if we piled up rocks and everything else, uh, there's too much loose sand, uh, risk of high centering. And just because we're both uh, overland rigs, trying to recover in a situation like that, we may not even be able to get the other vehicle to the recovery because we can't winch off anything else because it's just shrub brush um, and some of the boulders, like that would be the only one that we can get a strap around. All the other ones are small enough. Well, they'll actually move. So uh, I think one of the important things to know is know your limitations and what your vehicle can do, what you can do and make the judgment call uh, for what's best for you. So we are going to bypass this one and move on to the next and see what the uh, next challenge looks like. And none of that was said with a light heart. We, we really did want to take every hard, the hardest possible line. Uh, obviously on the three uh, triplets, we ended up taking the medium of the run line because the other one was just kind of crazy hard. And that's what we have to compromise here is the capability of our vehicles. We have overland rigs. We don't have rock crawlers. We have to stick within the scope of what our vehicles are capable of. And even right now, just walking down this is pretty terrible. It's hard to show the um, scale of what this rock really looks like, this whole track, but uh, trust us, it is gnarly. And of course, right around the corner from the bypass and not even actually past it is another tricky bypass. So. The way around the one we passed was hard, and now this is actually tricky also. So Trev said it looks fairly straightforward, so I'm just gonna run up it, but it definitely doesn't look easy.
Okay. Stay passenger, more passenger. So that obstacle was by no means challenging. However, because it is 108 degrees out today and Trev and I are just not, probably not drinking as much, we're doing a lot of video, um, which believe it or not actually is mentally, you have to be on point to be able to do video and at least to make it look like it's kind of fun. So it's exhausting. This is exhausting work and we're tired and getting a little dehydrated and not taking care of ourselves as well as we should. And also my truck, decided that it wanted to do a little overheating while I was on this obstacle. So I had to kill the AC, which meant I was sweating. So it happens, not a big deal, but let's see how Trev does on this one and get up on to the higher elevations. Yeah, you're good, stay on that line. Yeah, straight up. The passenger, the passenger. Straight. Hold there. You feel like you're falling, don't worry. Yep, come right at me. Doing good. Alright, come driver a little bit. Yep, stay that one. Yeah, stay centered, you should have no issues. You have to straight up crawl up. Nice, that's 
stop when you can. We have to stay center. before that. Trev crawled right up that with no issues at all and excellent spotting if I do say so myself. That's the contributing factor to a successful team, good spotting. Yeah. So this is like the 700 obstacle on, and this is just the lower section of the back way to Crown King. This isn't even the upper section where the trail itself has the over, uh, the obstacles to overcome. So I think Trev might be looking at an even harder line. Um, I took what looked to be the hardest line. Um, he might try the other way because it was actually pretty straightforward. Went right up the middle. So let's see which way Trev goes. Yeah, you're gonna clear it, easy. Stay a little bit more driver side. Yep, stay with me. <laughs> You're back in for the slide on the torch passenger. Hey, you're good. You got a bunch of ways to go before you fall off the edge. I just back up and then punch it. There you go. Come to me, come to me. There you go. Hey, come straight at me. Hey, straight at me. Yep, right there. Don't don't go any more passenger. Yeah, passenger, passenger, passenger. Now driver. There you go. Otherwise, you'd have gotten really at a bad angle. Yep, right down the middle. You're good. Last time I came through this, had a really, really hard time because of ground clearance. People have definitely filled this in with more rocks. This was more of just dirt before, but uh, it is still a pretty good step up onto this. And it's super, super slick from people just kind of rubbing their tires on it and uh, just smoothing it out. So we'll see how it goes. I have no idea what that was but it was about a foot long, and if that crawls in my ear, uh, I might have to uh, Epstein myself. Well, Trev guide up that pretty easy. Hopefully I do the same. Hey, lizard, lizard. Hey, lizard, lizard. The right side of the 
So from what I remember and what I really hope for is that this is the very last obstacle. There's just a lot of large boulders and a lot of rutted out areas. This is, uh, like I said, on the main trail. We are just below the actual tree line. Uh, hopefully we will be much cooler because right now it's still, God, hot as Hades up here. But uh, Trev's coming up and I'm going to lead him through. Hopefully no damage. <laughs> <laughs> nice try <laughs> so what that jarring effect that you just experienced was was me actually falling uh, there was a boulder here that I didn't see and fell right on it because the ground is really soft and loose so that's how dangerous this is people can fall it's dangerous Coming up. Nailed it. Boom! High five! <laughs> Driver. There you go. Now drive it. We made it to the top of Crown King, and that was really, really hard. Yeah, that was a lot more of a challenge than I thought it was gonna be. Um, but again, you can vary it however you want. If you do the you know, main road all the way up, uh, you can do it in a stock Tacoma. You can, you can so, do it in a stock Tacoma. If you take the bypasses. Yes. Taking uh, the hardest way possible was challenging. Yeah. Definitely challenging. And we really only, missed one yeah one i obstacle, don't know so. how many obstacles we actually destroyed because we were killing it out there killing it. and i'll put a little counter down here i'm sure <laughs> that will tell bing, us bing. number of successes and, and one one bypass yeah. yeah and one where we had an option of three we chose the middle road so we yeah. could have definitely done the harder one but you know is what it is it's in the rear view plus uh, it was the first one too I think it was the first one. Yeah, it was the first one. So w with that, you, you don't want to really yeah, just... you got to warm up yeah. to these things, yeah. you know? You don't jump in the hot water two uh, feet first. No, no. 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 You did dip one toe at a time. Yes, one toe at a time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you liked us just beating the bejesus out of our vehicles today. And be yeah. sure to hit like. Be sure to subscribe. We'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.